It's the end of the second quarter earnings. Recently, I've been using this uh, checklist tool that I built quickly with Google Sheet. So how it works is there's a list of checklists that I'm going to use to evaluate the companies that I'm interested in. So some of these checklists, they compose of how good the product receptions are. So you look at things such as the product reviews, is uh, the Google search trend on an increasing trend, is the website trend increasing fast, the industry that they're operating in, are, are they growing uh, fast or not? And all the way to other checklists such as valuation, various financial ratios, stock price movements, uh, certain risks to look out for, and also the company's management and culture, along with other things such as uh, economic modes, their social media trend, international growth, customer lifetime value, uh, etc. So there are few statuses for each of the checklists. Either I rank them as pass, which is the best the score I can give, or fail, which is the worst, mediocre, uh, unsure, and not applicable. So I will try and update all the status of the checklist. Uh, maybe not all, uh, but mostly for valuation and financial side only. Uh, once every quarter, whenever the quarterly earnings are released, because I need to look at the financials again and see if they are good or not. And for the others, such as uh, insider sellings, glass door rating, etc., I'll try and check them at least uh, once every every quarter or every half a year, uh, at least. So, at the end of the column over here, I have uh, pretty much a score, assuming every every of these checklists are equal weightage, and I rank the companies uh, in my portfolio from the top to bottom. So how I obtain this is uh, taking all of the status which are pass minus which the uh, with, with the ones which are considered as fail. So I, I get these scores over here. So as of now, the top three companies uh, based on the ranking of my portfolio will be Fortinet, Exxon Enterprise, Microsoft, followed by the ones that are considered as second tier, uh, SPS Commerce, ServiceNow, HubSpot, Duolingo, and these are the sort of like the uh, lower tiers one, like Airbnb, Meta, Tesla, and Apple, which score the lowest among the whole group. And this is how my current portfolio looks like at the moment. Um, most of the stocks that are ranking high, uh, they would actually be uh, allocated with higher holdings, except for Tesla. Tesla, the thing is, uh, I, I was planning to hold them at 10% of my portfolio at least, uh, but I can't really justify continuing to dollar cost average on them because their fundamentals don't look very strong uh, at the moment and there are other companies that that, that, that appears to, to deserve more of the weightage at the moment. But I'm okay to keep whatever position I have with them at the moment. Uh, I'm still quite long in the company. Even in the electric vehicle space itself, discounting uh, the fact that they may achieve autonomous, full autonomous self-driving and also humanoid robots as well and followed by these other companies uh, in my portfolio. So overall, I'm, I'm quite comfortable with the portfolio weightage now, except for Exxon. Exxon, I think, is, is a great company. It, it scores uh, one of the highest in my portfolio. But I think 27% allocation to any company is uh, too high. Uh, preferably, I would like to keep it at 20%. But as the saying goes, you know, if the winners are running, just let your winners run. So I'm not adding additional funds into it. It's just that they've been, uh, the stock price has been increasing by a lot recently. So um, I'm not going to rush it so much because uh, to, to divest it because I also don't think that it will make sense for me to divest the stock to other companies which I don't find to be as, as strong fundamentally compared to Exxon. I can divest it to Fortinet, but their guidance for the upcoming year is only at 10% uh, in comparison to Exxon's guidance figures which are you know, at, uh, at 30%. So it's a huge difference over there. So yeah, that, that's the update for the second quarter earnings season. Um, we're going to have to go through another round similar like this again in, in the next quarter. So uh, let's see how much the portfolio allocation is going to be changed by then.